This is actually going to be a two-part review. The first part is going to be me driving to the Nürburgring. And then I'm going to actually do a country road review after I've driven the car on the Nürburgring. Because usually I'm always in the car and I'm very anxious to go on track and that bothers me so much. So I'm going to be much more relaxed. I'm going to be able to not freak out quite as much when I'm driving on a country road. And because on the way to Nürburgring there is a little bit of Autobahn, I figured let's just see if what the grumpy Germans always claim, which is why would you get a powerful car because you don't have the space to use the power anyways. Well, immediately I'm leaving the on-ramp and I'm doing 180 already. So, uh, point proven already, kinda. <laughs> And that's 2.30. I mean, this is what I'm saying. I already have to brake again, but I did enjoy myself going these few meters at full blow and just enjoying the engine node and just enjoying the freedom of being able to do this. Because we're the only country in the Western world anyways that gets to do this. Anywhere else, I would be going to jail if they caught me doing this. So, uh, yeah, I'm a pretty happy camper over here in Germany. You do have to understand, though, I don't have an official number, but um, what I keep hearing is that 55 to 60% of the Autobahn is actually restricted, meaning you're going to be doing a bunch of uh, 120, 130. I'm actually going to shut up because the sweet sign is coming up. And actually, let's go to Sport Plus, PDCC in soft mode. Not breaking any rules here, 98 kph, let's go. <laughs> Autobahn drive and you're not from here take it easy don't push too far because you do have to have quite a good understanding of what people are gonna do you have to anticipate and whenever you are in doubt you always 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 have to lift it's different on the Autobahn it's not when in doubt flat out here it's when in doubt definitely lift <laughs> it's important <laughs> lift it takes a bunch of experience to drive fast on the Autobahn. I mean, if it's completely empty and you're just going to be driving in a straight line, eh, I mean, anybody can do that. It's not very difficult at all. In this car, going 300 in a straight line with no traffic, you can probably do that one-handed. Don't do that, but you probably could. This is 210, and he obviously thinks he's going fast. I have the car that is actually fast, and he won't let me pass, and... Maybe the grumpy Germans I was talking about before, maybe they're not wrong after all. Maybe you don't need 420 horsepower. Because you have freaking old people in old people Benzos blocking you. Come on! Well, thank you Mercedes. Took you some time, but eh, that's 240. I mean, it's always worth it. Anyways, that's going to be end of review phase number one. And cut. apart flip the apex Brrr.
let's try launch control right here. Sport, Sport Plus, I don't know. Launch control active, and here we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I think the real deal is gonna be doing this in a Turbo S. <laughs> that is when stuff is gonna get interesting. But this does pull from a line at a very proper pace. When you have the car in sport mode, the throttle mapping is at its most aggressive. Let's just go back to Sport Plus. Which in Sport Plus, the throttle isn't quite as aggressive, which on a track is better because you can modulate it nicer. And the engine is just so powerful though. 3 liters, 420 horse, 500 newton meters. Pushing a 911 on a racetrack gives you a much better perspective of the mode of what it's actually capable of and the sort of performance you can get traction wise because the traction in the 4S is ridiculous. manageable because the balance the 911 gives you is just beautiful it stays neutral and if you push very hard as any Porsche engineer will tell you the cars are set up to understeer a little bit when you drive it on the road you can't really push it hard enough so that it'll understeer you would have to be properly nuts to drive like that on a public road and I do have to say, PDK, even on a country road, I still very much prefer it over the manual transmission. PDK is best. A PDK on a racetrack is spectacular. No matter if you shift yourself, which I still kind of prefer, but if you leave it in auto mode, it's unbelievable. And there are no sketchy weight shifts. It shifts so quickly, you can shift mid-corner and it's not really gonna be a problem ever. cars where I personally much prefer having a manual transmission. For instance, the GT86, the motor doesn't make the entire experience quite so frantic and even driving a GTS on the country road quickly, it gets sort of tough, sort of difficult to manage shifting properly because you have to be so quick to do everything. The manual is fantastic as well. If you want to get a manual, Dude, get a manual. <laughs> you won't be shifting as fast as this though, but that is being kept obvious, of course. Yes, I don't have to push all that hard and it's enjoyable to drive. So it turns out all it takes for me to relax a little and take a little bit more easy is around 30 laps on the Nürburgring over a couple of days and then I'm good, I can chill. All right, boys and girls, it's gonna be verdict time because I'm gonna go to Pinocchio's and eat some more pizza. The 911 is a great car for the road and just for daily driving, and you can fit enough stuff, not quite as uh, practical as a Cayman or a Boxster, but you can fit enough stuff in here. It's a great road car, and it's a spectacular track car, and that's the verdict right there. That's a good sign. Let's go.
the 9-11 love is really pretty strong right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a while since we've actually had you on camera with us, man. It's great to see you. Yeah, man. This is kind of a bittersweet moment, though. And it quite is. a place to leave it things is. with that 9-11 piece. I mean, always a good place to leave things on a 9-11, on you, Porsche. Yeah, right? okay, we're finishing with Porsche. You're surprised. <laughs> but no, Tom, th here's the thing. Some of the people that have followed our podcast know this already. Some of the people that are, are, have watched the last couple of reviews have made comments yeah. because it's been coming for a while. You have a huge opportunity. You are leaving us from the video side, but I want you to tell everybody what's going on. Yeah. yeah. So, um, like you said, unfortunately, I won't be able to do video for Everyday Driver anymore. Um, which frankly sucks because um, I loved working with you guys, especially Todd and I. Uh, the hundreds upon hundreds of hours we've spent like working on videos. We had some good times there, man. For sure, yeah. yeah. This is happening for me now. So congratulations. So what is your position going to be there? You're not. You're not location? going. That's the thing. You're not going to get coffee. Exactly. Um, so that is Automoto und Sport, which is if you are going to work for a magazine in Germany and you want to work for the very best and the largest one, the best one, uh, this is the one, right? And um, I'm, I'm going to be a writer for them. So that is happening, right? You are an excellent writer, and I'm glad that they have recognized that, and you have this huge opportunity. I mean, you said to me when, when we first talked about this a few months ago, you said you were sorry to leave, and I was like, you have to go because yeah. I love having you here, but of that is course. a massive opportunity, and we're thrilled you're getting it. Yeah, absolutely. The big thing about this also is, well, it's going to be a full-time gig, first of all. Yeah, for sure. And uh, just for everyone else, I'm like, I usually, so far, I did IT, and I just did everyday driver on the side. So now I get to not do IT anymore and just do cars. We, we've done all our work online, right? But now on a daily basis, I get to go to an office and there's only car people there. And that's all you'll talk about all day long and what the next car is and you've got well, access. What What is so amazing is, is you're in Germany. I mean, this is the mother ship. This is yeah. where the, the best manufacturers, in my opinion, exist yeah. on the planet. And you're going to be right there in Stuttgart, right? You're, you're actually going to Stuttgart. Yeah. It's Porsche land and Mercedes. So, yes. but as far as Paul's concerned, primarily it's Porsche land. You might be, you know, reviewing whatever that is, some mundane things, but trying to find, you know, the enthusiasm out of that. And that's yeah. what I love. You're, you know, all the films that you've done, you're finding what it is yeah. to like about the car, whatever it is. Yeah. Of course, McLarens, Porsches, all that stuff. Do you like it immediately? Yes. But what yeah. about all these, the Golfs, the, the relatable cars? We're soon going to be asking Tom for advice in cars. It's uh -huh. going to happen in a very short period of and time. And he's going to write us, you'll never guess what I drove, picture. <laughs> Sigh. Yeah. It's going to be a bunch of crossovers as far as I can tell, because, I mean, everybody is just coming out with crossovers and crossovers, right? Pretty much. Well, man, we're, we're so proud of you and, and uh, happy, Amazing. and congratulations. And I know everybody watching is too. Of course, they'll find your name in the masthead. So when they're traveling, yeah. you know, pick that up. It, are you going to be writing in English or is it entirely in German? No, it's all going to be in German. So that's going to be pretty difficult for our viewership. But I've been on the website and the website will do translate. Oh, yeah, but that's going to be horrible because it's going to be Google Translate. Yeah, yeah, don't get me wrong. I look at We're picture not, books anyway. We're not going to get a good sense of how good your writing is by doing Google Translate. I do agree with that. I do agree with that. But my point is you'll be able to know what the content of the article was, right. just not Tom's style. And no, right. I know that guy, which just, I'm excited about. I just want to see him. I just want to see the photos of the cars and we'll be good. <laughs> Of course, we'll be seeing you every year when we do our pilgrimage trip. We're yeah, excited about that. That won't end. Of course. And who, exactly. And, and who sure. knows when we'll cross paths again. Honestly, man, this is, this is genuinely bittersweet because yeah. you're a close friend and we love having your work. We've just enjoyed knowing you anyway. Not that we don't anymore, Absolutely. but knowing you anyway. Then there's been work on top of that, which has been so great. Yeah. But to have that launch you into something this scale is phenomenal. So I'm excited and I'm sad, but it's amazing. <laughs> well done, man. Well done. More than anything, man, just congrats. Really big time. Really thank big you time. so much. And, and thank you for having me on the team, which uh, meant so much to me. And it was just awesome working with you. And, and you know I loved working with you so much. And uh, now, new chapter. Thank you everybody for just watching my stuff for like a couple of years now. And um, I'm very appreciative. And now it's on to new things. Thank you so much. Laters. This is actually a very nice comparison to when uh, a couple of days ago we went at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It is now 20 minutes past 8. And yeah. No, you never get to drive quickly on the Autobahn. Never. I mean 280. Yes, you can do 280, but <laughs> other than that, nope.